It's been almost a year since I introduced Speed Rain Supreme, my platform for sharing real and fictional stories from every aspect of motorsports. It brings action, thrill, and emotion in ways unlike any other piece of sports or live entertainment. Yet so many just don't care for it, whether they didn't grow up around racing or aren't even familiar with legal professional motorsports. There's a large chunk of people who don't follow racing and don't understand why people follow it, and for some, why they'd never want to work in such an industry. I wanted to cover a full race weekend with a specific goal in mind, showcasing many stories from the world of racing in one weekend, and get people on site to share their experiences of why they love racing. Stick around. Whether you're someone who just wants to understand why people care about racing or a longtime fan waiting to learn more, I'm going to walk you through perhaps the most distinct racing weekend on the American calendar. Welcome to Indianapolis, Indiana, the home of the IndyCar NASCAR doubleheader. Six national racing series competed over three days in one city, including four at the world's most famous circuit, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Indianapolis Motor Speedway has existed for over a century and has hosted the world's oldest and most prestigious oval race, the Indianapolis 500, since 1911. Since then, the circuit has hosted Formula One racing, NASCAR racing on both its oval and road courses, sports car racing, and more. Since the beginning, memories have been made and stories have been told at the Brickyard, given its nickname for the original bricks used to pave the track, some of which still remain at the start and finish line today. It's been a make or break track for stars across all motorsports, and its prestige is known to millions of race fans across the world. For both the superstars claiming victory at the track and the underdog winners from the track itself turned into legends. Since 2020, the Speedway has hosted a unique doubleheader weekend with both their hometown IndyCar series and NASCAR hosting races at the same weekend. This year, four races were held on IMS's 14-turn road course in one weekend, beginning with Indy NXT, the rebranded feeder series for IndyCar, on Friday. Saturday saw a host to the NTT IndyCar Series, America's most prestigious open-wheel series, followed by the NASCAR Xfinity Series, NASCAR's second-tier series. Finally, Sunday afternoon saw the NASCAR Cup Series take to the track for a main event filled with international stars from other areas of motorsports. Indianapolis Motor Speedway wasn't the only spot to watch racing this weekend. On Friday night, just up the road, the Arkham Menard Series, another NASCAR feeder series, as well as the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, both had races on the short oval circuit at Indianapolis Raceway Park. This was the biggest year for NASCAR and IndyCar's partnership yet. I spoke with drivers, fans, and media members throughout the weekend to talk about their own racing stories and what it means to see major racing series collaborate. I think there's not many times in the year where we get to kind of be a fan and look around and see different series because every time we're at the racetrack, we're racing on Saturdays, we're racing on Fridays, we're racing on Sundays. So we don't get to watch any car, we don't get to watch Trans Am, we don't get to watch, you know, any of the series really that, that we love to watch because we're obviously all race fans. Mm -hmm. uh, so them being here and us seeing how, how their world works and them seeing how our world works is really cool because uh, it's perspective is everything. And I think sometimes you get really stuck in like the NASCAR frame of mind sometimes. Yeah. And once you kind of branch out and see how other places are, I feel like it either gives you a greater appreciation for us or gives you a greater appreciation for them. And it kind of helps. You know, I think it is huge. I would love to see more of it. You know, a lot of these people are racing fans. I'm not, you know, there's not just NASCAR fans or IndyCar fans. I mean, if that's what you're doing, that's fine. I would advise against it. I would just say, look, be a fan of racing. You know, and one of the, in the early days of Twitter, I remember that one thing that was frustrating 
is the IndyCar fans would kind of sort of snipe at the NASCAR fans and vice versa. Oh, you're running taxi cabs, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, all these series are different, but they're all racing. Go, you know, oh my gosh, go check them all out. Love all of them, you know. F1's going to be different from IndyCar. It's going to be different from NASCAR. going to be different from NHRA. Check them all out. They're all kind of the same thing. They all kind of have their own personality. I would say, you know, check them all out. So I think it's very, very good. Yeah. Um, I think what that does that allows for uh, fans of different disciplines to kind of pick up on the others and really learn how things go together, and it really just makes it all worth it. So I think it's really great to have multiple racing week series coming together for one weekend. Yeah. When you bring when you bring IndyCar and NASCAR together for a weekend like this, it's a great thing because these are the two biggest motorsports in the United States. Um, with so many great talents and drivers, there's a lot of crossover too, and you're doing it at the greatest racing venue in the world. I mean, it's a perfect, perfect weekend for motorsports fans to be able to experience some of the best drivers in the world on this very, you know, tough road course. And the fan accessibility to drivers and all the facilities and whatnot, it's really special. And I hope they keep doing this because it's really a special weekend. This is my first time here, and this is one of the best race weekends I've ever had because it's just amazing that you have two completely different disciplines coming together in harmony for a great race weekend. Uh, I think giving bang for the buck for people who are, you know, making a trip across country or whether they go to something, that aspect, it gives them more than one thing to check out while they're there. Particularly, I could take it leave it. I, I like the their standalones. Uh, I think the more unique each schedule is, the better off you are and the chance you have, like, Man, I would be packed for a truck race and, uh, you know, South Boston could be packed for an Xfinity race or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's just not where we're at right now. So I don't know if we're going to get back to that. Uh, it seems like trucks are kind of going back that way with Milwaukee and a few other things happen. Mm -hmm. And Xfinity's kind of going to Road America. The Cup's not going there anymore right now. So there are a couple standalones. I I would like to see more standalones myself. I think, you know, trucks, I'd love to see them get away from like this mile and a half super speedway stuff just because it, the Pretty much short tracks, you don't get aerodynamics as much. And it's just a little more like, rooting and gouging, kind of what that series is meant to be. On Friday night, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series began their championship playoffs at IRP, as 10 out of the 32 drivers competing are still in contention for the season championship. And a win for one of them today would make it a lot easier to be one of the four drivers vying for the crown in the season finale at Phoenix, an honor that could change the trajectory of their career. This is the second time the series has ran there after a decade-long absence. One of the biggest stories surrounded Australian supercars driver Shane Van Gisbergen, who is making his debut on an oval for Nice Motorsports. We'll talk more about him in a bit. The track was packed along the front stretch grandstands and the hill in turn one as every driver in the field fought hard to gain position, trying to find a faster groove, and even trading paint. At the end of the 200 lap race, it was the best truck winning it, as a driver with a strong short track background, Ty Majeski, took the win. Saturday was an action packed double header that showcased the stars of open wheel racing and the rising stars of NASCAR. The day highlighted winners from legends to the next generation. In the NTT IndyCar series, one of the all time winningest drivers, Scott Dixon, got his first win of the season and now marks 22 years of his career that he's had a win. The Xfinity Series race ran into the sunset, but the sun shined down on a driver that has a bright future ahead of him. Cup Series rookie Ty Gibbs, trying to get into a groove that would help him make the Cup Series playoffs. Occasionally, Cup Series drivers will run in Xfinity Series races in a way to prep for the big race on Sunday. With Ty Gibbs, this was a way for him to get more experience. Plus, it adds a unique challenge for the up-and-comers to try and beat the stars of today and tomorrow. Ty Gibbs said afterwards that this win was special to him, knowing he did a lot of kart racing as a kid around the area. Every racetrack has different cars on it, and every racetrack's a different size, different special things about it. You race dirt, you race dirt bikes? That's super cool. That's awesome. For me, honestly, I would say it's like the history, you know, yeah. like especially in a place like Indianapolis, you know, whether it's IndyCar or if it's NASCAR, I guess you could say 
F1 for a short time as a grand, but you know, just seeing how people react when they win here because you know that you've done something that only maybe, you know, less than 100 people have actually been able to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, and especially with like Daytona, you know, there's only been, what, almost 70 run-ins in that race. So, you know, those are, I, I think for me, like I said, I think it's more the pageantry and the history. For me, it's, it's kind of, it's along with the history, we keep meeting people everywhere we go that have stories about the track that they're at. Um, you know, this happened here, it's not just on race stuff, it's, you know, this crazy thing that happened with me and my friends at the track, so, um, and they share those with you when you meet them, all the, you know, this happened to me, uh, you know, on the mounds over in turn one, or whatever, um, and that's, you know, that's part of the, the whole track experience, it's not just on racing experience, it's, it's meeting up with your friends, it's the whole, you know, traveling around, going to different races, and it's something as big as Indy or something as small as IRP, it's all. Honestly, if people ask me what's my favorite track, and, and really it's the track that I'm at, right? I, I don't have really have a favorite one. It's just wherever I'm at, behind the wheel of a race car, that's my favorite. Without the there, speed there, right? and the sound. Yeah, not too, not too bad. I, I think smell. trying to make a little more progress it's than this guy's tire Ford Mustang. Very great Big shot of pole here, but... Uh... NASCAR's Cup Series is wrapping up its second season with their next-gen car, which has become very popular for international drivers to give NASCAR a shot at a road course. Most notably this weekend was Shane Van Gisbergen, an Australian supercars driver who shocked the racing world by winning in his NASCAR Cup Series debut at the Chicago Street Circuit in July. Now a lot of eyes are on him to see if he will start a new chapter of his racing career in NASCAR. There's also Kamui Kobayashi, making his NASCAR Cup Series debut, a Japanese endurance racer with wins at the 24 Hours of Le Mans and the 24 Hours of Daytona. Formula One champion Jensen Button and sports car veteran Mike Rockenfeller also raced this weekend. Meanwhile, on the side of the full-time NASCAR drivers, Chris Buescher is having a career-defining year, coming off back-to-back -back race wins for the first time in his career, locking himself into NASCAR's championship playoffs. The battle for the last few playoff spots is tight with three races to go before the cutoff, and a win today for a full-time driver would lock them in. Many drivers on the outside are known for their road course talent, including Mexico's Daniel Suarez, who earned his first career win last year at Sonoma. Michael McDowell, a driver whose career started in open wheel, but who's still looking for his first road course win in the Cup Series. And the most popular driver in NASCAR, Chase Elliott, a former NASCAR champion who looks to claw his way back after missing races from an off-track injury. All of these drivers would be near the front of the pack all day, and one of them would punch their ticket to the playoffs. Michael McDowell, having the best season of his career, dominated the second half of the race to earn his first win since the 2021 Daytona 500. A driver who was once an underdog has become the series' road course ace, and finally closed out a win when it mattered most. McDowell is a driver who didn't even start out in this kind of racing, yet he never gave up on his dreams, and this weekend he accomplished a dominating win. Watching him celebrate with his crew and, for the first time, his family shows why racing can be special to its competitors and fans as any other sport. There's plenty of things that separate it from any traditional sport, too. It's just an adrenaline rush. It's fun to keep up and see how everyone's doing. And Because it's fun? Absolutely, it is fun. What about you? We spend time together as a family and everybody gets to hang out together. I, I love racing because I love competing. That was like the first thing that I fell in love with, like being able to do something at a high level and you know, be able to compete at the highest level and push yourself because I feel like you're always endlessly pushing yourself. But I think the reason why I stayed in racing instead of just giving up if I'm not good enough is that the people. I think that being in this garage, seeing all these people, knowing their lives, uh, them knowing my life, and us kind of being there for each other all the time, I think that is really what keeps me into racing. I think it's it's similar to other sports, but also kind of unlike other sports, we're kind of like a traveling circus, and there's so many of us that travel together uh, that we become so close. So I think that is really why I like racing. Uh, 
the competition part is awesome too, but that's probably like a side thing. Man, racing is special. Is it? I don't really think anybody could honestly answer that question, right? We're all addicted. It's, it's it's truly in our blood, and it's just something that runs through our veins that we just cannot live without. So, man, it's just the the speed, the smells, the sights, everything about it is just something we all love. Well, I guess it comes back down to my childhood. One of my the first movies I remember really like was Car. My dad would always talk about how the like, NASCAR. That really got Race me fans, into Anthony Cowell here with you on so Pit Lane, really, joined now really by a that. face that knows. I love the thrill of it. I love uh, the thrill of seeing those cars zoom by you, going upwards of 150, maybe almost 200. Um, just the danger in it that's inherent. And just knowing these guys are out there and they could be their last race. And they're out there and they're putting their all into it. It's awesome. I think for me, what makes racing so intriguing and amazing, I mean, motorsport's my favorite kind of sport, it's all the different disciplines that go into making a race happen and winning a race. It's not just the athleticism from the driver, but the strategy for the teams, the engineers who build the cars and try to make sure that these parts can last, you know, 400, 500, 600 miles. Um, all the people behind the scenes who are loading the cars, unloading the cars. There's so many different pieces, and it's really fascinating because I don't think any other sport has so many intersections of disciplines of, you know, engineering and strategy and, you know, even things like financials, like allocating money to figure out, you know, what resources we need to put in to make our team successful. There's so many things that go into that's fascinating and that's why I love it so much. And it's just fun to watch cars go fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the yeah <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's fun watching cars go fast. Well, here's what happened. I kind of fell accidentally uh, into the love of racing, I'd say around... 2005, 2006, my wife got me into it somehow. Um, it's a long story we won't go into, but uh, I wound up at a race at Michigan uh, because she had started watching it more and more, and I kind of started watching it more and more with her. And we went to that race in Michigan, and it did not take long to just immediately realize what was so different, what was so special about it. You know, if I wanted to, uh, if I realized, hey, you know, not only is there great camaraderie here, great people, I can also kind of sort of, in a way, pick what sort of action I'm going to see. If I want to see beating and banging, hey, I can travel to Martinsville or Bristol. If I want to see ridiculous speeds, I can go to Michigan. And I was suddenly realizing there was like a kind of a different character and personality to all these tracks and how it changed from week to week. Uh, you know, it's not you know, not like a football field. Every one of them is 100 yards long. You know, uh, and so was like, oh, there's like so many different aspects of this that I didn't realize. And plus, every race is a mini vacation. It's going somewhere, it's hanging with friends. It's not only going to the track, but checking out a new area, a new part of the country. So, yeah, it's a bunch of different factors. I grew up in a racing family. special to me just because the competition's intense. You never know. Um, you've got people that you're like, man, I, I don't know if this guy can cut it. You, you start doubting people. They, they can't do something. And all of a sudden, they'll have a day where they just show and they rise to the occasion. Oh, crap. Like, I didn't expect Michael McDowell, for instance. Like, nobody expected a Michael McDowell pointing his way into a playoff situation. We're almost mm -hmm. there. So it's one of those things where you never know what you're going to see in racing. And just when you think you have it figured out, something weird, something different happens. Um, it's one of those things where you can try to predict it all day long and you can't. So, uh, from that aspect, that's why I love it. Uh, where I got involved with the race, where I got started with the race, it was 1993. Uh, when my uncles came over to our house, it was like, hey, Daytona 500, let's watch it. We're all like, what the hell is the Daytona 500? Um, <laughs> turned it on and I was, I was hooked. Uh, the Dale and Dale show, you had Rusty Flipping, all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like four, and I was like, what is this? And, uh, I was hooked. And 
yeah. been hooked ever since. And when I got out of high school and said, you know, we're going to pursue this writing thing and did that and got into a couple outlets, kept moving forward, moving forward, and eventually started my own site and here's where I'm at today. Just like any traditional sport, motorsports are built around community. Whether you're born into being part of putting on the show or watching at home out of sheer curiosity. Of course, not everyone will think it's their thing, and that's okay. But to say the community and camaraderie of motorsports is dead or never existed to begin with is far from the truth. And every series has a unique, exciting, and entertaining product to boot. For the thrill of it, so to, keep, I just, to keep, I just, to keep I just, the thrill in it, keep up with people, right give it a chance. I'm so sorry. No, it's it's definitely something. fun to keep up with and see everyone achieve. Yeah, it's nice to see the younger drivers get back into it. Now the older ones are retired. You know, for I think if, if you're the type of person that wants to find new things, like if you, I mean, you don't have to have a guide to be here. You don't have to. I mean, just seeing something that is out of the ordinary and seeing people at their most passionate, I think that's that's what makes life cool in general. I think when you see anybody doing anything, I go to like the World Crocheting Championship and watch somebody crochet their heart out. Yeah. Like that's something they're passionate about, and seeing the lengths that they do to be able to to be successful and be happy doing what they're doing. Yeah. Like you see that all over here. So I think as just like a human being, like whether you like sports or not or racing or not, coming out to the racetrack and seeing how people operate and seeing, you know, people's livelihoods, especially on the line, I think that's super entertaining. And, and you'll might meet somebody who can be a friend for the rest of your life. And you yeah. might not have anything in relation to them other than racing. Sometimes you might have to trick them to come to a race, but honestly as soon as you get them to come to the racetrack, they are instantly uh, partners and sponsors and fans and alone everybody that comes to the racetrack the first time they truly fall in love with it you get to see it experience it and they absolutely want to come back I told them the so much different than, than you know Essentially doing the same job that we do, you know, we yeah. find a million ways it's going to count, I guess, but uh, it, it's like fun to see the differences and, and, and uh, it shows the track. Line. All right, enjoy yourself, wow. keep making your family Sunday proud, and good luck this weekend, okay? Thank away. you, appreciate it. Take the race. Yeah, that's, a, that's the best way to do it. I mean, the best way to experience a race is to take, to take him to it. I mean, yeah. my dad and I have done that before. I've had friends who've never been to racing before, and we've taken them to races, and they absolutely loved it when they went there. I mean, I've taken friends to Daytona 500 to Coke Zero 400. Loving first time when he went to those. The races are first time. So if you really want to get someone into motorsport, I think that's the best way to do it. Take them to a track. It doesn't even have to be a big series race. You can do it like truck series race or Xfinity, and that can still have the same effects. So track. come to the track. Just come to the track once. Uh, give it. You know, pick a weekend. Ask somebody on Twitter. Ask any one of us. Hey, you know, this is where I live. What should I do? We will tell you. Go to this track. Sit here. Uh, go do this. You know, just be there because, you know, being there for the first time is exactly what you know, be in and I think through a lot of other people. Uh, they just, you know, they don't realize it. They might have a misconception in their head about what racing or NASCAR or IndyCar F1 is. Once you come here and once you see it, it's entirely different. <laughs> yeah. I would just say anything that you think you've ever experienced at a sporting event uh, is going to pay on your person. So uh, the biggest thing I always tell people is I've been to a football game. And football games are cool. You get the tailgate experience and everything. And you get there, the product, when you're actually in the stadium and in your seat, it's pretty boring because you're in one specific spot. The guys are going down to the 50. They go all the way. You're like, where are they? What's down? What are they? Oh, I guess we scored. Okay. <laughs> um, racing, there's something happening at all times. It's so loud. You're there with your buddies. You're listening to the radio. There's just so much going on. And it feels like you're there. Like, it feels like you're in with them. Uh, they come through, you feel the energy from the cars. Uh, the only other sport that's live that's kind of like that, I guess two sports are somewhat like that, hockey and basketball, because there's always something happening. They're always going back and forth. Back oh, yeah. Back and forth at such a tighter uh, arena. But stuff like football and stuff like that, like, there's such a huge crowd for it. But when you get there, it's just, I feel like it's a letdown. Uh, and racing is the complete opposite of that. I feel like it's really energetic. Uh, really exciting and by the end of the weekend if you got people sitting around you use your friends so it's pretty cool you go no friends you walk out with everybody so in all forms speed reigns supreme why should you care about racing if you don't already because motorsports provides excitement unlike anything else yet remains accessible to fans who are already excited by traditional sports it has its magical moments on and off the track and is special for millions of people around the world, all with their own stories to tell. It doesn't even have to be at a world-famous racetrack. Your local racing series or weekly racetrack has plenty of drivers and crew members trying to become champions in their own right. 
and their own fans out to make memories. Walking through this weekend shows just how much variety there is in motorsports. And I didn't even scratch the surface of dirt racing, off-road racing, drag racing, and countless other kinds of motorsports with their own stories. Even in the big leagues like NASCAR and IndyCar, there's stories to be told from racetracks that aren't the crown jewels of their series. Gray Speed Productions is my outlet to tell those stories. And as much as I love fictional storytelling through racing simulations and asking what ifs across racing history, the truth is that nothing makes for a better story than the real paths that every driver, mechanic, team owner, journalist, fan, and so many more have taken to reach their own racing story today. If you're someone who already loves racing, What's your own story? And if you're someone who doesn't care for racing yet, are you ready to start your own?